If you have your Bible, open up to 1 John. It's way in the back of the Bible, just before Revelation, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John is what it looks like. But go to the one that looks like 1 John, 1 John, and find chapter 5, the very last chapter. And let me just mention... The first night of Rock Conference. Oh, I encourage you to go listen to those Rock Conference messages. They were so anointed and powerful. The first night of Rock Conference, I opened up with a message on preparing to receive answered prayer. How to prepare to receive. I'm going to touch on some of it today, but I went into much more depth in that, in that message. But I also shared that first night some words from the Lord that... When I was fasting and praying, January 2nd through the 4th, the Lord spoke some things. He actually spoke 72 different things to me that I wrote down. And, uh, I, but I shared about maybe a dozen or so with you. And we've posted those now. You can find those on the Rock app or you can find them at gototherock.com. You'll see 2023 words from the Lord. And so you can go there because God is speaking. He wants to do something this year for you. Amen. He wants to bring prayers to pass. Miracles to pass for you this year. Okay, here we go. 1 John, 1 John, chapter 5. 1 John, chapter 5. And I want us all to read out loud verses 14 and 15 together. 1 John, chapter 5. We're going to read from the New King James Version. If you don't have that version, then follow along on the screens if you would, so we can all read the same words. Here we go. Now, everybody read loudly. Let's read it like it's not the words of, this is not just some human author. These are not mother goose, you know, fables. Isn't that right? Or Aesop's fable. Man, this is the word of God. So let's read it as the word of God. Ready? 1 John 5, 14 and 15, reading loudly and together. Let's read. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now, let me say it back to you. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. It's like somebody said, well, here's one thing I'm confident about. And this is what the Bible is saying. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, in, in the Lord. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. We know that we have it. How many of you would like to know that your prayers are answered? Come on, to know it, to know it. This is what this is saying. We can know which prayers are going to be answered. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. Is this in the Bible? Yes. Does that mean it's true? Yes. It is true, isn't it? Let me tell you what the title of this is today. God is answering prayer now. God is answering prayer now. God is answering prayer now. This is not just something one day God will start answering prayer. Oh, no. We're in it now. God is answering prayer now. Say that out loud. God is answering prayer now. Say it again. God is answering prayer now. Say it one more time. God is answering prayer now. Prayer now. Listen to what Jesus said. Is Jesus honest? Does he ever lie? Never. And Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Didn't he say that? Yes. Ask and it what? Might be? No. Could be? No. Should be? No. What did he say? Ask and it will be given to you. And then he goes on to say, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Now, why would Jesus say that? Why would Jesus say that? Is he deceiving us? No, some people think, well, the Bible, you know, it says lots of good things and everything, but you never know what God's actually going to do. So it's just saying that to kind of encourage us and everything to ask. And we just throw out prayers, but God ultimately just decides what he's going to do. Well, wait a minute, then Jesus is a liar. Then Jesus is a liar. 
Because he didn't say, well, throw some prayers up and God will decide whether or not he wants to answer. That is not what he said. And we got to stop allowing people to teach us that Jesus is a liar. He's not a liar. He's not a liar. Jesus has a different perspective than people do. And that includes a lot of Bible teachers. Jesus spent eternity past with God the Father. And he's coming from a perspective saying, I know him. I know how he is. I know how he thinks. I know how he views prayer. I know how he views his people. And I'm telling you, ask, and it will be given to you. See, because we don't really believe it, when we come to ask, we don't come in faith. And then we're not asking according to his will. See, if we ask according to his will, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have it. But we're not asking according to his will because he said to ask in faith. And we're not asking in faith. We're asking hoping. I hope he'll do it. Our job is to ask. His job is to decide when he's going to answer. Well, wait a minute. According to Jesus, no, he did decide he was going to answer. When we ask according to his will, amen. And then we're supposed to know that we have the petition. See, that's part of faith. We know. We know. We know that we have it. Let me tell you, I, I've prayed many, many prayers, thousands and thousands of prayers. Only God knows how many I've prayed. And so often I prayed, and I was hoping. Come on, be honest. How many of you say, yeah, I prayed but didn't really believe, but I was hoping it was true. Come on, raise your hand. Come on, everybody. Nobody wants to be a liar in here. Anybody not raising their hands because you never prayed anything. <laughs> Isn't that right? No, you're praying, you're hoping, but you don't know. You're not sure. But, but the Bible says we need to be sure. We need to be sure that God is going to do it. We need to believe. Well, how do you do that? By coming and what we're doing today. Oh, you're in the right place at the right time today. And Jesus is saying, ask, it will be given. See, the more you hear him say, it will be the more you be, begin to believe that. And if you keep hearing him and hearing him, you'll be convinced. And after a while, man, you'll ask, I'm telling you, I have gotten to the place many times where I believed it. Come on. Let me tell you how, let me tell you a, a sign that I learned of when I really believe it is when I ask him that I instantly go into thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, not as a formula, but from the heart, because I know in my heart, and joy comes. Why? I get the excitement right then when I'm praying about what it's going to be like when it happens. I get the excitement right then because I already believe it. Isn't that right? I already believe it. You know, if, if uh, your car broke down somewhere and, uh, and, and you can't get a hold of anybody that you thought would help you and such, and then somebody called you on the phone and you said, hello. And they said, hey, what is that? Well, I'm on the side of the road and cars are going by and I need some help. They said, oh, you know what? I'm just, I'm just down the street from you. I'll be there in about three minutes. Oh, yeah, I'll help you. Yeah. Oh, oh, how many of you know you say, well, I'll believe it when you get here. <laughs> I'll thank you when you get here. But right now I'm, a, I'm stressed. Nobody will help me. No, if you believe the person that said it, you automatically feel relief already. Isn't that right? You feel the relief. Why? Because somebody said something to you and they're credible. You believed them and oh, oh. And then that person you couldn't get a hold of might have called you back and said, hey, what? And you say, hey, don't worry about it. I, it's all covered. Somebody's coming to get me right now. Isn't that right? Amen. Yeah, they're coming to get me right now. True. Faith. 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 Faith changes our emotions. We feel joy, we feel hope, we feel the excitement of it. That's how you know that you know. Exactly. Amen? That's how you know that you know. And I've experienced this so many times, and I just know I've got it. Oh, and I've got so many testimonies where, man, and a miracle happened, and I didn't even know how it was going to happen. I just knew inside. This is what God wants to do in us. God is answering prayer now. Say it again. God is answering prayer now. Now, listen to what Jesus said in, in John 16, 23. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Talking about the day he dies, is raised from the dead, and ascends back to the Father. Well, that's today. 
You'll ask me nothing. He said, don't, don't ask me directly. Go to the Father and use my name. And watch what happens. Whatever you ask the Father in my name. That's why I learned many years ago to come and say, Father, oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's the name that the Father says. Oh, yeah. His name? Oh, yeah. What do you want? What do you need? Oh, he, God the Father responds to the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, now, my name and your name, well, that, that doesn't have much credibility in heaven. But his name is the name above every name. Isn't that right? And God says, oh, that name? Oh, if that name's signing the check, oh, yeah, that check's good. Amen. Your, your old name might not be on heaven's account, but Jesus' name is on heaven's account. We use his name. And Jesus said, use my name. He'll do it. Isn't that what he said? Use my name. He'll do it. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. He will give you. He will give you. You notice how Jesus talks about prayer? He doesn't say might. He doesn't say sometimes. He doesn't say most of the time. He doesn't say should happen. He said it will happen. Amen. Ask and it will be given. Ask and it what? Will be. Asking it what? Will. will be. Somebody said, why do you have repeating? Because we need to repeat the truth because the lie is still in our mind. We need to repeat the truth until the lie is gone. And we don't believe the lie anymore. And I believe that God the Father even loves me who is imperfect, who doesn't measure up to everything he has asked me to do. He even loves me and he'll answer my prayers. Yeah. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll answer you. Listen to Jeremiah 33, 3. God says, call to me and what? This is an open screen test. <laughs> call to me and what? I will answer you. Didn't he say that? I will answer you. See, a lot of people, they're, they call themselves Christians. They go to church maybe somewhere, a mass or whatever. But they don't know that God is really like this. And so when they call to him, they really don't expect much. And they get exactly what they expect. Isn't that right? But Jesus is coming and saying, oh, don't pray like that. Don't pray like that as if he's not real, as if he's not true, as if he's not honest. No, don't treat him like that. Treat him as if you believe him. Treat him as if he's faithful and dependable and loyal and benevolent and kind and gracious and forgiving. Treat him like that because that's how he is. That's how he is. And when you pray like that, you're praying according to his will. And he hears you. And if you know that he hears you, you know you have it. See, so call to me and I will answer you. This is God speaking. Call to me. I will answer you. I will answer you. Little old me, Lord. Sinful me, Lord. Haven't lived up to what I should, Lord. Made many mistakes, Lord. Even ruined parts of my life, Lord. Yeah, you Call to me and I will answer you. And not only that, I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know about. Is that right? Call to me. Call to me. Call to me. It is the will of God to answer our prayers. It is the will of God to answer our prayers. It is the will of God to answer our prayers. So, according to 1 John 5, 14 and 15, if we ask according to his will, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have it. Isn't that right? So, how do you ask according to his will? Now, I covered this in that first message of Rock Conference in much greater detail with stories and explanations and such. And so, you want to make sure to go through that and listen because it'll help you. But let me just give you these things. Asking according to God's will is asking for things that are God's will for you. For example, if you're a married uh, woman and you say, Lord, I know I'm married to this person, but Lord, give me that man. How many of you know that's not according to his will? <laughs> Isn't that right? Well, you said ask and you'll be given. <laughs> yeah, but it's ask according to his will. Ask according to his will. Isn't that right? That's not the will of God for you to have that man. Amen. Amen. But you can ask God to heal and to, to change the relationship and the person you're married to. Isn't that right? Yeah. Isn't that right? Somebody said, what, what, do you, what do you do when, you know, the grass is greener on the other side? You water your grass. Isn't that right? You water your grass. Amen. Amen. See, this is what God is saying to us. God's saying, no, look, ask according to my will. Don't start letting your flesh dominate you. And you're asking for things that are wrong. They're going to ruin your life. Somebody said, well, it'd be better, you know, if I just get out of this and, and go into that. And you think it will be, but don't you remember that scripture? It's cheaper to keep her. 
Okay, okay. It's not a scripture. But how many of you know it's true? It's true, isn't it? Oh, the heartache. Oh, the effect on your heart, her heart, the kid's heart, other people's hearts. Your loss of credibility. Your loss of, of advancement in life. And plus, where is your God in your life? If all you do is just kind of escape from problems and get out, well, where's your God that's supposed to be taking down the big giants? Where is your God? Where is your witness? I can't overcome anything. I just need to get out. I need to get out. I'm just a weakling, right? Well, hey, no, let me tell you, marriage is tough. Isn't that right? Some of the biggest giants are in marriages. Isn't that right? Some of the biggest giants. But God is bigger. And if God can't handle that, well, what kind of a God are we serving? He can handle it. He can handle it. God is powerful. God is faithful. He's a miracle working God. Amen. Amen. See, but we need, to, we need to put God to work on these things. And let's ask according to his will. Now, by the way, if you've been divorced, if you've, uh, you know, had things happen in your life and such, don't, don't feel condemned and guilty. Every one of us have a past. Isn't that right? Tell the person next to you, I know you do. Come on, tell <laughs> every, every one of you have a past. Every one of us. Every one of us have a past. Isn't that right? Every one of us were born into this world sinners. Oh, let me tell you, we were, somebody said, well, I just feel like a loser. Yeah, but yeah, you, you're in the formerly losers club. Isn't that right? <laughs> Come on now. Don't do this, but you, you know what I'm talking about, right? But God takes us from where we are out of mistakes we've made and sins we made and we messed up things. God says, I'll take you from right there where you are. Come on, serve me right now. Ask me right now. Ask according to my will right now and I'll do it. So we need to ask things that are God's will, but we need to ask the way God taught us to ask. Like Jesus just said, ask the Father in my name. No, I don't feel comfortable with the Father. I'm going to ask Jesus. <laughs> well, then you're not asking according to his will. Just follow the program. Can you imagine? You know, somebody say, well, here, here's your check. You're going to write up here. This is who you're paying to. No, I'm going to sign my name up here and I'm going to write who it's paid to down here and everything. Well, you do, but it's not going to work. Come on, just do what he says to do. God knows how this system works. So we need to ask the way God says to ask. Isn't that right? And not only that, we need to ask with the right heart and attitude, in humility and with faith. And then we need to live in submission to God. You know, if, if you've got a teenager and your teenager, man, just cusses you up one side and down the other and flips you the bird and such and kicks the hole in the wall and such, and then says, oh, I forgot. Can I borrow the car tonight? <laughs> How many of you know that prayer is not going to be answered quickly? Isn't that right? We got some issues to deal with here. We got some issues. You cannot live like that and expect your request to be answered. And this is the same way with God. Our life is connected to the request. Now, not that we have to measure up to pay for the prayer, well, i got to be good enough for two weeks and then God will answer my prayer. That's not the way it is. But I say at minimum, what you need to do is, say, is come and apologize to the Lord. Say, God, forgive me because I've done wrong and I need, you, I need you to wash me from these sins. Forgive me and thank God that the death of Jesus on the cross paid for all of them already. And he says, if you'll confess it as a sin, I'll forgive you. If you confess it as a sin, I'll forgive you and I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then we say, okay, Lord, I don't want to treat you that way. I want to follow you and everything. Man, just like that fast, you're in a position to receive from God. Isn't that right? You're in a position to receive. But if you ignore it and act like, well, maybe God doesn't notice that I'm doing these things. He notices. God, what do you mean maybe he doesn't notice? He knew you were going to do it before you made that dumb decision. Isn't that right? God is God. He knows everything. He knows everything. And God is answering prayers. God is answering prayers. Now, here's how we ask according to his will. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Let's put that up here. God said, if my people who are called by my name will do four things. If they'll do four things. Number one, if they'll humble themselves. Number two, if they'll pray. Number three, if they'll seek my face. And number four, if they'll turn from their wicked ways. And I taught this in detail the first night of Rock Conference. If they'll turn from their wicked ways. Watch this. Then I will hear. Then I will hear. 
What did First John say? If we know that he hears us, we know that we have it. God says, if you'll do these four things, then I'll hear. Then I'll hear from heaven. And I'll forgive your sins. See, look, what do you mean forgive your sins? Well, why would you hear us and answer if, if we have sin? See, he's not looking for the perfected people. Once I get my life together, then I can come to God. He's saying, no, no, come right now. But you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive all your sins. You'll know that you have it. See, if you'll do these things. Well, what does it mean to humble yourself? What does it mean to humble yourself? It means that you stop acting like God is a peer or a subordinate. And you come under the Lord and acknowledge him as the king of the universe, as the creator of all things. He's God and you're not God. There's so many people that come. I mean, even people looking for, I've seen, I've been around church all my life. So I've seen people, oh, yeah, we're looking for a new church right now. They come and visit here and they go other places and such. And then they get in the car and they talk, you know, you know, I like the worship, you know, but I didn't like the style. I didn't like the way that one singer went. I didn't like their voice. And I, I didn't like, you know, and I mean, the pastor's amazing looking and everything, but, but, <laughs> but I didn't like this and I didn't like that. And, you know, and they go in because you know what? It's all about them. I serve God for me. Has nothing to do with him, what he wants, what he likes, what pleases him, his preferences. It's all about me. I'm just like choosing what restaurant I'm going to eat at. I want the food that I like. That's it. And nobody else's preferences come in. Because they don't say it. But here's what they say. Here's what they are saying. Because I'm really God. I decide. Instead of saying, Lord, you're God. I'm not God. Where do you want me to go? Because I'm not only going there to be ministered to. You've called me to bless other people. Amen. It's not about me. I'm here to help them. So, Lord, what ministry do you want to use me at? Whether it's a big one or a little one. Whether it's close or far. Lord, where do you want? Because... My life belongs to you. See, this is the right art. Other people come in, you know, and will say, hey, let's, let's all lift up our hands to the Lord. And there'll be people that are there saying, yeah, that's not my style. That's not my style. Yeah, this is one of those churches like, you know, that, that's just not my style. That's not my style. And yet, the Bible says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Yeah, that's just not my style. You know what we're saying? We're saying... I don't really care what you say. I will worship you the way I doggone want to worship you. So, Lord, if I just want to say, <laughs> that's the highest worship. Arrogance. Who do we think we are coming into the creator of the universe? By the way, without whom we would all spend eternity in hell. Hell is real. But God so loved the world that he sacrificed his only son, killed him with a brutal death on the cross to make a way for us to be forgiven, to be changed, to have eternal life. He did that. And we come in here and say, I'm just going to do this. That's my style. Oh, the arrogance, the ingratitude, the smallness of our, of our attitudes before the Lord. So wrong, so wrong when he said, let me tell you what blesses me. I can tell you about my wife, you know. I could get her a power drill for Valentine's Day if I want to. <laughs> but she would know that's really about me. Is that right? She's really about me. Uh, Milwaukee, if anybody's interested. You know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I already have one. But you see what I'm saying? No, but if I want to do something for her, I'm thinking, what does she like? What does she like? What does she like? If we're going to come in to worship the Lord, it's not about what I like. What style do I like? What the, no, this is not about what I like. Worship is about what you like, Lord. 
And I found that I, I can worship God with any style of music, even if it's not my preference of style. It's not about the style. It's about my heart saying, Lord, I love you today. I love you. I've been in services with other languages. I don't know the language, but I can just lift my hands and say, oh, Lord, I love you. I don't understand the words of these songs, but I know the heart. Lord, I bless you, and I love you today, and I can worship God because it's not about me. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, humble themselves and pray and pray and pray and pray. What does that mean? Pray. Well, I, I mean, I told God and then I walked away. No, we've learned this week and Carol Ward really helped us. No, God wants us to lean in in prayer, lean in in prayer, pray, seek my face, turn from my wicked ways. Lord, I got some things in my life. Lord, I'm turning from those, but I need your help to turn. Oh, that blesses him to say, I'll help you. I'll help you. You make the decision. I'll help you. You make the decision. I'll help you. Then I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive your sin and heal your land. God is answering prayer now. We are in a movement right now where God is teaching us. Let me just close with this. I, I shared this on the first night of Rock Conference, but you know, when, when my kids were little, and particularly Jonathan, because he loved to play, you know, with the ball and such, and then our grandsons, they like to play catch and everything. But, you know, when they're two years old, you, you can't just say, hey, you want to play catch? You want to play catch? Okay, get over there. Okay, watch this. <laughs> well, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. But, but it, you know, and even if, you, even if you just say, okay, here you go, throw the ball to him, it just... Right? Their reflexes are too slow. They just can't keep up with that level of catch. So you know what I'd do? I'd say, okay, here we go. Now, put your hands together like this. And then they come out like this. No, no, no. Let's keep them together like this. So the ball doesn't go in between, right? Keep them together like this. You ready? And then instead of being three feet away, I'm three inches away. So you ready? You ready? Okay, here we go. Like this. And then it drops on their arms. And then they look. And then they grab it. Right? And then... And this is exactly what the Lord's doing with us. He's saying, I know that you don't know how to live a life of answered prayer, but I'm helping you. I'm telling you exactly what to do, how to hold your arms, where to put your feet and where not to have your feet, where to put your eyes and where not to put your eyes, where to put your ears and where not to put your ears, how to humble yourself, how to pray. I'm teaching you how to pray. Seek my face how to turn from your wicked way. And then I'm going to hear from heaven and you're going to catch the answer to your prayer. Things you've needed, things you wanted, yeah. things your parents need or your neighbor needs or your friend needs. I'm going to hear from heaven and answer your prayer. I'm telling you exactly what to do. Just follow me and I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you the joy that I get when one of my grandsons catches that ball from three inches away and they look up like, I did it. I did it. Is the joy the Lord gets when you get your prayers answered. But we just follow him because his thoughts are higher than ours. We have to let him show us. How many of you are willing to let the Lord show you? Come on, let's stand right now. Let's stand right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to ask you to do something, okay? I'm going to ask you to lift your hands in just a minute, just a minute. But I, I, I want to tell you this. When, I, when my life was changed when I was about 18 or 19 years old, oh, I became desperate. There's something about desperate cries to the Lord. It's because when you're desperately calling out to the Lord, you tell him and, and let him know with everything about you, you're my source. You're my answer. I have no, no other place to get this answer. This requires supernatural power. So I remember, you know, anywhere I was at home, but even at church, you know, if anybody said, let's lift our hands, you know, I, I didn't do this. You know, I think some people are from those old Western movies. You know, they just draw their guns. <laughs> and we say, lift your hand. I knew in my heart, oh no, God said, lift your hands to him. I knew in my heart, I want to show him that I'm going to lift my hands with everything I have. And my expressions are showing to him that my heart is all in. 
See, but that requires humility. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Well, that's just not my style. But it's his. Yes, it is. Interesting. It's our style in relationship with other people. Don't we love it when people just go all in and love us? with their whole heart and their expressions and everything, their facial expressions, when they love us like that. You know why you feel like that? Because you were created in the image and likeness of God. And it blesses Him when we give it everything we have. Let's lift our hands to Him right now, can we? Look up to the Lord your God. Oh, Tell him, say, God, I need you. Lord, I need your help. You're a good God. Tell him, say, Lord, I humble myself before you today. I renounce pride. I humble myself before you, God. I seek your face, what you want for my life. I turn from my wicked ways. Help me not to walk like that anymore. In the name of Jesus. I put my faith in you, God. I put my trust in you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Say, Lord, forgive me from all of my sin. Wash me by the blood of Jesus. (laughs) And strengthen me to obey you you. and I thank you you. that you will answer my prayers prayers. the ones that I doubt doubt. now I'm having faith faith. thank you 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 will answer my prayers prayers. in the name of Jesus Jesus. forever O Lord your word is settled in heaven you are not a man that you should lie you will do it All the promises of God are yes and amen. So I believe you, God. I trust you, Lord. Show me how to do this so that I might please you and see my prayers answered. Now, everybody, put your hands down and look at me. Listen, this is what God is doing. God is real, and he's taking us as a people, and he's saying, follow me. Come right along with me and watch what I'll do. Watch what I'll do among you. And he's already started it. It's not going to start. It's already started. And those of you that were in these prayer times, you already know, oh my goodness, we're in something here with God. He's doing it. Miracles are already happening. So this Tuesday night, right here in this room, there'll be a prayer gathering. And then Friday night, right here in this room, you see it online and such. When you walk out today, you're going to get a piece of paper that'll show you the new service times. It'll show you the prayer times. Everything's on there for you. Just grab it on your way out and put it in front of you. But let's follow. Let's follow. Somebody say, oh, I I just come once a week. You used to be like that. You used to be like that. but Not anymore because now you've humbled yourself before the Lord and we're following God. We're following God. Amen. We're following the Lord. We're following the Lord. Somebody said, I got a date Tuesday night with my spouse, you know, for Valentine's Day. Well, then you just can't. No, no. no. <laughs> well, then just pray because maybe you need to go on that date. Amen. But there'll be prayer Friday night and all week on YouTube. Isn't that right? Yes. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Okay. So we're not under the law, but we need to lean into this. God is with us. Yes. Say it out loud. God is with us. Yes. Say God is with me. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Let's say amen and clap in agreement. Can we?